A very good morning and thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogel's European Outlook. It is the 1st of February and it is the first day of the final month of meteorological winter 21-22. Uh, in today's video I want to look at the overall setup that we've got in place and um, touch on what has happened so far this winter and indeed where we're going for the final month of the winter season. Um, Sudden, sudden stratospheric warming has certainly not been uh, materialized as was hopefully anticipated. We, you know, myself and other forecasters, based on all the parameters the that were in place for this upcoming winter season, had hoped that um, a sudden stratospheric warming would occur. And not just I go further than saying hope, because um, it wasn't just a kind of wish cast. It was based on a lot of hard work that certainly I personally had put in from July all the way through till now here, based on uh, you know the easterly QBO, the uh, lag of the eighteen to fourteen, uh, eighteen to twenty four month, um, following the solar minimum, we had a a, a negative uh, IOD during the autumn season, which. Um, plays a role and um, one of the nagging aspects as opposed to this winter was how warm the um the north atlantic and indeed the entire atlantic basin had become during the second half of summer and through the autumn season i suppose another aspect that you would want to consider would be the, the very very warm september that we had across the british isles as well and those certainly are not particularly favourable um, factors when you look at the past. Uh, very warm Septembers do not typically reflect the cold winters that they follow. But of course there is always room for the atmosphere, for the weather to throw in curveballs and surprises. The biggest surprise this time around is the fact that we didn't see a winter at a time where I thought uh, everything uh, or pretty much 99% of everything was coming together to produce a winter and you know potentially the coldest winter since 2009-10. You look back, go on the marfogunweather.com and, and look at all the articles that I've written and uh, of course the winter forecast itself, uh, if you want a good laugh that is, and um, certainly it, it does make me start to question you know, um, the the future of long range forecast and generally speaking, uh, it looks as if the you know with the planet having warmed uh, over the last ten years or so, and indeed the um, you, you know, is that playing a role in terms of distorting what typically would be good indicators for um for long term forecasting now doesn't apply, and uh, I think that is something that needs to be considered and i'm certainly going to spend quite a bit of time over the next uh, few months looking at the overall long-term forecasting because at the end of the day i don't want to be um subject to um you know significant ridicule for forecasting something and it not to happen and of course when you publicly um you know forecast anything there is always going to be people out there that just simply want to see whatever you say, uh, you know, fail. And um, it certainly was a, a very dis disappointing forecast. Even if we did, did do get a very cold spell during, you know, say, the, you know, the second half of February, which at this very moment in time, I don't see happening. Um, it's It's been and gone. And, you know, there's too much of the winter now past for there to be any sort of kind of recovery in terms of the uh, credibility of the forecast that I produced back at the start of December. But certainly I do question um, a lot of things, including the climate change aspect. It's something that I, I don't particularly like to choose to speak about because um, it's almost like a religion in itself. And there's a lot of people that get quite antsy, quite upset when you say things that doesn't necessarily bode with their philosophy or their ideas with regards to global warming. Um, there's a lot of people that I do follow, have great respect for, that uh, believe CO2 is warming the planet. I've never bought into that idea. Uh, I believe it's um, other factors. But certainly when you get 
um, a period now of you know ten years where you don't really see much of a winter, and um, when you've got um, a, a setup like such as the solar minimum, and then of course following that, uh, in the years gone by there has been a colder weather. We're not necessarily seeing that this time around. Now maybe I'm wrong. Maybe next year is the big year for winter. I don't know, but I don't want to keep year in and year out forecast and something that i believe is going to happen it's not just based on getting clicks or getting subscriptions on youtube or whatever it's based on hard work and it's based on my understanding of the of, of earth's climate and then putting out a forecast based on everything that i'm seeing in front of me i don't want to do that and then for it to fall flat in its face like it did in uh, the year 2021-22 so we'll wait and see what happens, um, but uh, it certainly has made me question things and um, even my own uh, thinking towards uh, you know big things such as climate change. Um, we'll wait and see what happens, but certainly anyway, um, the uh, polar vortex, um, both within the stratosphere and down into the troposphere, is pretty strong at this moment in time. They have coupled. And we are seeing the response of that. Now, up until now, we've seen warming within 10 millibar level from Siberia uh, pushing towards uh, North America. And in turn, what we've seen is we've seen a continuous feed of cold air from Siberia crossing over the top of the pole and into North America. After the warm December, we've seen things changing over the, the, the lower 48 during the course of January colder weather now in play across the the united states here what that's doing is it's pushing cold air down into lower parts of the latitude so the middle altitude region over the north american side of the the the, the hemisphere is cold there's also a lot of heat stored up still within the caribbean and that's been continuously trying to push uh, northwards here we've seen that during the month of december a lot of heat from the Caribbean pushing up into the eastern portion of the United States. Hence, we had one of the warmest Decembers on record for the lower 48. But we've seen the change taking place. The warming over Siberia, over top of the pole into North America, that's been advancing the cold further south. And we've created a fight over the eastern portion of North America. That then downstream, in turn, it supports a stronger jet stream across the north atlantic and without any blocking in place uh, we have an open door to the atlantic and that has been the case of course certainly in over the past weekend we've had a uh, you know back-to-back -back storms and uh, if you haven't already do check out the video that i published yesterday because uh, storm cory had some quite rare aspects meteorologically speaking about it it was a very very weak area of low pressure by that i mean central pressure and uh, it was fairly compact but it produced some pretty rare and extreme um, events across scotland based on the fact that it wasn't a particularly deep area of low pressure so do check that out if you haven't already done so and of course the atlantic jet stream is ruling the roost it's pushing cold very cold air out of europe it's basically almost it's 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 doing a complete loop pushing it out of of Europe into Siberia into Russia then of course you've got the cross polar flow in the North America and you repeat the cycle and that has been the case now as we play through the loop here uh, of the 10 um, HPA temperatures you can see here the vortex remains strong uh, the coldest uh, temperatures within the vortex over the North Atlantic so uh, that is going to keep the um, NAO very very positive indeed notice here we've got an another fresh a injection of warmth uh, from Siberia crossing down towards Alaska here and it's still pushing the vortex towards our side of the pole now it looks as if it takes a little bit of an attempt at making a little bit more penetration of the vortex here if you notice here but then it regroups once again it then builds back over the top and we repeat uh, what we've had already here and um, that the uh, that warming taking place over Siberia um, in towards the pole here, to me, reiterates that we're going to continue to see Arctic air into the eastern portion of North America. But simply, we're going to keep the jet stream active over the North Atlantic 
and we're going to continue to keep this pattern going now of course we have to also consider the rare the rarity of how strong and how persistent the area of high pressure has been over the azores let's remember a week ago we were sick and tired of of no weather that azores high extended up towards ireland and the british isles keeping all the weather either far to the north or a uh, redirect down towards the canary islands when i was down in, in the canaries we were seeing weather that you you should have seen almost in in, in the uk but up across the uk were just stagnant area of high pressure that had been so dominant um through the, the the period here and it looks as if that high is going to maintain itself as we go forward so you get the overall idea the driving mechanism to the north american or the northern hemisphere should i say pattern and of course if you look at this tweet by marco Patang patagna i hope that is the right spelling mark it marco should i say um because he's put out a tweet very interesting tweet to say about how strong the stratospheric polar vortex looked looks coupled with the tropospheric jet stream and of course going forward that indicates a positive arctic oscillation and north atlantic oscillation so all this um leads to the likelihood that we're going to continue to see what we're already seeing at the moment here we're seeing the high pressure extending from uh, siberia towards alaska follow the isobars you can see that the feed of air is coming from asia across the top in the north america and then of course you've got a stronger than normal azores high you've got the trough over the north atlantic and of course you get that westerly flow going here and it looks as if we're going to maintain that theme as we push through to day 10 a uh, reinforcing the pattern that's already there in place folks we've got the trough over the north atlantic we've got the ridge over the mid-atlantic and extending towards the southern half of the british isles and uh, you get the overall idea generally speaking now this is quite interesting here because um i'll tell you what i'll go back uh, i apologize going to go back and we're going to have a look at the uh, five day mean two meter temperature anomalies here because this is also quite interesting it reiterates the, the point that i'm making about the stratosphere and uh, the warmth over siberia you can see here over the arctic region look at where the core of coldest air is over the hemisphere it's over canada it's over the united states it's over the northwestern portion of the atlantic this then feeds a stronger jet stream across the atlantic and of course it drives warmer than normal air across western europe here any cold air is focused up across uh, scandinavia here and as we play through the loop you can see here the cold continues to penetrate all the way into the, the southern portion of the united states notice here florida is warmer than normal of course the la nina ridge uh, which always likes to hang on over the southeastern portion of the united states that is a, a factor as well and of course that also helps kick the jet stream towards the british isles here as well but you can see here the focus of the cold air over this region of the pool um, and it looks as if that's going to maintain itself and of course when you've got that temperature imbalance and the focus of cold over north america you then of course focus the jet stream uh, in a particular fashion here now if you notice here you can actually see it's it's not very easy to see this but you can actually see areas of high pressure um run from east, uh, eastern portions of siberia over the top in the north america continuing to drive that cold south and of course as we see that taking place then what you've got is a strong jet stream continuing to cross the atlantic here as we go forward do i see any real change during the month of february if we do see change it will be towards the end of the month i think if we do see change that is but at the moment i don't really think we're going to get anything uh, particularly different than what we've seen already here so i think i've spoken long enough hope you have a good rest of your day uh, and of course if you like the video please like it uh, and subscribe as well please of course hit the bell to keep notified of the latest videos have a great day i'll be back again hopefully tomorrow with more bye for now